Dear God, on Pentecost, we remember when you sent the Holy Spirit to the friends and followers of Jesus. With a mighty wind and tongues of fire, the people from all over were able to hear and understand God's word. Guided by the Holy Spirit, the disciples shared the good news. Red is for God's love shared for all the world. Orange is for the tongues of fire connecting us to each other. Yellow is for the sun that shines upon us. Green is for new beginnings, new life, and the beginnings of the Christian church in the world. Blue is for the wind blowing the power of the Holy Spirit. Violet is for God's words spreading peace to all the world. Help us remember that you are always with us. Help us to be like the disciples. Fill us with the Holy Spirit and help us go forth into the world to share your word with others. Help us to live as Jesus taught us and to love one another. Amen. Hello, and welcome to Storytime. Today is a very special day. You see, today is the church's birthday. You have a birthday. When's your birthday? My birthday is in two months, so I'm very excited about that. Well, today we celebrate the church's birthday. It's on a day called Pentecost. Let's read a story on how it all began. Jesus had risen from the dead on Easter. It had been a surprise to everyone when they went to his tomb early in the morning and found it empty. Later that same day, Mary Magdalene came running to the disciples shouting, I saw the Lord. I saw Jesus. He told me he's going back to the Father. That evening, the disciples met secretly to talk about Mary's vision. They had to hide because they were afraid of the persecution of Rome. Suddenly, Jesus appeared amongst them and said, May the peace be with you. He showed them his hands and his side, which had been wounded during the crucifixion. The disciples were happy to see Jesus. And Jesus proceeded, Just as my Father has sent me, I will send to you the Holy Spirit. I'll soon have to leave again and join my Father in heaven, but I'll send the Holy Spirit in my place, and he will live within you. Jesus lived amongst his closest followers for 40 more days. Once, when he was eating with them, he said, Do not leave Jerusalem yet, but wait for my Father's promise to come true. John has baptized you with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Fifty days after Easter, all the disciples were gathered together. Suddenly, there was a very loud sound, like a really strong wind that came from heaven, and it filled the room. Then they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire, which separated and came to rest over each of their heads. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and started to speak in other languages. The Holy Spirit gave them the skill to speak in strange languages. That would be a good thing to do. There were God-fearing Jews from um, everywhere in Jerusalem who had come for the party of the weeks. They had heard their own native tongues being spoken and curiously came near to see what was going on. They were from many places, India, Persia, Mesopotamia, Judaica, Cappadocia, Pontius Phyrega, Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya, Rome, and so on. Each of them heard the disciples talk of their, in their own language. They were questioning among themselves, aren't these men Galileans? How did they speak our language? Perplexed, they wondered what that meant, but some of them made fun of it and joked, I think they drank too much wine and are drunk because they're speaking nonsense. 
Then Peter stood up and addressed the crowd. Attention, attention, everyone. These men are not drunk, like some of you may be thinking. It's still too early in the morning. What's happening is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Joel foresaw, in the last days, says, says God, I will pour out from my spirit over all people, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Young people will have visions, and old people will have dreams. I will pour from my spirit over my servants, and I will make wonders in the skies and signs on the earth. Listen to me, Israelites. Jesus from Nazareth was a man accredited by God, and that was confirmed through miracles, wonders, and signs. Wicked men hung him on a cross, but God resurrected him from the dead because God is stronger than death. You can be sure, Israelites, that Jesus was, Jesus was made Lord and Christ by God. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Your sins will be forgiven and you will receive the gifts from the Holy Spirit. The people were astonished and almost 3,000 people believed and converted on that day. At Pentecost, God gifted the church that was starting. He sent his Holy Spirit to help guide his church. He would be present in each believer's heart. Then these people would transform lives with his help. They would spread the good news of God and his gifts and miracles. What an amazing story that was. That's how the church started. That was the church's birth. And today we celebrate the church's birthday. Have a great Sunday school lesson and we'll see you next week. Bye. Hi friends, welcome to our special Pentecost craft activity. Today we are going to make a streamer. I think it'll be a lot of fun. What you're gonna need is a dowel like this or a popsicle stick or even a pencil or a pen will work in a pinch if you have one of those at home. You could also make this on like a binder ring and tie all the ribbon around it and weave it around like that. But I'm gonna use a dowel that I have here, which is just a round piece of wood. You also need a pair of scissors and some ribbon. I've chose to use fiery colors because today is Pentecost. So I have orange, I have some red, I have some yellow. We've been working on the rainbow. So you can use any colors from the rainbow you want. I also have purple and blue and green, but I'm not gonna use those ones on mine. You can though. Okay, so we've got our dowel and I'm gonna set that aside and then we're gonna take our ribbon and we wanna have lengths that are about the length of your arm. Okay, so we're gonna cut a whole bunch of lengths of dowel, or ribbon, sorry, that are about the length of your arm. I like to leave mine doubled up at the end, easier to cut and easier to tie too. See what I mean? Doubled up and then I'll trim that off. One, two, I think I'll do three of the yellow. Three, there we go. And I think I'll do three of the red. Ooh, this is a new spool of red. So many possibilities here. These ones are curly because it's curly ribbon. That'll be extra fun in the wind. One. Oh, maybe I'll only do two red and then I can do one orange. Ooh, variety is good. There we go. Here's my orange. I only had a scrap of orange, so I don't have one that's long enough to do six of them. 
but I think I have enough to do maybe four. You know what else would be fun? I didn't think of this before now, but we could make them all different lengths. That would be neat. Maybe I'll do four orange that are all different lengths. Let's drop that on the floor. Okay, and then when it goes to tying, we're gonna tie them all onto the top of our dowel. So you wanna take this, wrap it around. You might wanna find someone to help you hold it. And then there's two ways you can tie. You can just do a nice double knot like that. Nice and easy. <laughs> or you can wrap it around. And then feed it through. And that'll hold too. That one's easier. I'm going to do that for the rest of them. Wrap. This way I could reuse the ribbon. The knots won't wreck it. The knots would mean I'd have to, because I tied it really nice and tight, I would have to undo it to reuse it. This way I don't have to undo it. I'd have to cut it, I mean. Oh, it's coming together. What do you think? Put our orange one here. Feed it through. Spread them out enough so they're not too tangly, but so that they're all kind of up at the top like that. One more red. Now we can use the wind to blow this around and wave it around and be reminded of all oh, the story of Pentecost. There, I hope you make one too. Have a great day, everybody.